Networks. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we're going to have some great guests on, some great coaches, players, some of your greatest players that played at Maryland, guys that you may want to know about what they're up to now. Uh, we're going to have Coach Gary Williams join us at some point. Uh, today, we have one of Maryland greats, uh, national champion, Lonnie Baxter, helped him win the national championship, one of the greatest players to ever come out of Maryland. Um, welcome, Lonnie Baxter. You know, it's a pleasure to have Lonnie Baxter on, one of Maryland greats. Um, national champion, a former NBA player. Um, I definitely appreciate you taking your time out your busy day to, uh, you know, be on um, Go Turpins, Travis Garrison on Field of 68 Networks. I definitely appreciate you taking time out your day. Um, so what's going on, man? How's everything going? Oh, most definitely. You know, when a, when a former Turk calls, you know, I got to answer. So, you know, it's only right. I do this interview for my man, you know, my little bro. So, yeah. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm just working right now. You know, took a took a break so I could knock this interview out. So here I am. And thanks for having me. Now I appreciate it, man. I really appreciate it. Um, man, this this is my first podcast. You know, uh, you know, having the the turps on, man, and you know, like I said, man, just being a fan of some of the guys I'm bringing on the guests, man, just to be able to ask some questions. That so I may not have had a chance to do this plan, and I'm pretty sure a lot of fans want to know what's going on with you nowadays and how you been. Oh man, I'm just chilling. I'm, I'm a car salesman now. I work at uh, Coons of Silver Spring. Um, so if you need a car deal, just come holler at me. I'm always at work every nine. But besides that, I'm just a workaholic right now. I don't have much going on. Uh, that's what's up, man. Have you been uh petitioning the, the current team and everything that's going on with them? Um, I mean, I, I watch on TV. I haven't really, you know, been around the team a lot, um, you know, due to COVID and the restrictions, you know. Um, you know, I just follow them from afar, you know, everything I see on Instagram and keeping up on, you know, just watching them on ESPN, watching them on a local Big Ten network channel. And, you know, I've just been following from afar right. these days. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I know I checked out um, – I know they got a big win last week against Wisconsin, which was huge for them. They needed that. You know, I think that was their first win in the Big Ten. And then um, they played Michigan at home. You know, they, they started off well, but then, uh, you know, uh, they just ain't had no answer for, for Hunter Dickinson on that post. Uh, that gave them problems. But, you know, Michigan is a good team. And then last night uh, they played Indiana, Indiana. Uh, they started off well, but then, you know, they just – the second half, man, uh, Indiana turned it up, man, and, you know, ended up coming up with that win. So now they won in four in Big Ten. And, you know, it's the second half of the season, you know, almost almost Big Ten tournament time, uh, almost getting time to get ready for the NCAA tournament. So, you know, they got to turn it up. You know how the second half of the season go. You know, you got to turn it up now. Uh, most definitely. Um, unfortunately, you know, Daryl Morsell is going to miss a couple weeks. Um, he, I think got elbowed in his face and, um, you know, he's going to miss him and he's one of the glue guys that they need. So, um, it, it's going to be tough. You know, they got to find somebody to step up and fill his shoes while he's out. But I have confidence in them that they're going to, you know, fill the role that they need, you know, step in. Somebody's going to take his role and, you know, they're, they're very resilient. They're a good group of guys that knows how to come back and know how to fight back. They've been through a lot of adversity. You know, throughout the years, Coach Coach Turgeon knows adversity. He knows how to get them ready for adversity. So I think, you know, they'll be fine, you know, going into the Big Ten play. Oh, yeah. And I believe that, too. You know, like you said, man, those guys, man, you know, they do a lot. You know, last year they – Man, they, they they had a chance. I thought they had a chance last year before before COVID happened, man, and kind of like threw things off. So they kind of got that experience. I know they lost a lot of guys, you know, with Sticks and Conway and those guys, man. But you still got some guys coming back, like with the Wiggins and I, uh, you know, come back that's helping those guys out. And like you said, man, you know, Coach Turns is a very good coach, um, very resilient. You know, is going to get those guys ready, man. So you know, I'm hoping that they can uh, turn things around, uh, start next game. 
Yeah, most definitely. Uh, COVID really ruined a lot of things for a lot of people, um, especially the Terrapins last year, because they were going into, you know, they finished, they tied, I want to say that they tied with Michigan State. I can't remember who they tied with for the um, regular season, mm-hmm. Big Ten. But um, it was just sad because I thought they, they really had a chance to do something big. And COVID just really diminished a lot of things. And, you know, it's still affecting, you know, our everyday life and things around us today. So um, I can't wait till, you know, this COVID thing is over, go back to living our lives and everything. But um, unfortunately, we just have to deal with the situation. Like I say, fight through adversity and get through it. Right, right. Now, you're absolutely right, man. You know, as a player, man, like, <clears throat> I think I was just talking to the, my producer, man, Matt, saying how basically, just imagine, man, back in the days when, when y'all, especially you guys were playing, we was at ACC, and we had to play a, a Duke. Or oh, North Carolina with no fans, man. Oh, yeah. Um, that would be tough because the, the intensity was there. I don't I don't think we really needed the fans to have a good game. But, um, you know, we played in the ACC in a different time frame. And, um, you know, you guys played in the ACC. You were a year after I graduated. And you know those right. battles down to Cameron, going down to UNC, you know, playing at NC State, playing at Clemson, um, right. playing at going down to Virginia, um, you know, every night, the battle in the ACC. Right, exactly. So I was just like, man, just, you know, just dealing with these kids, man, that's used to playing the 16,000, 17,000 fans, and now you don't got no fans in the stands at all. You got to rely on your bench to basically keep the momentum going to keep that energy going. Yeah, um, it's definitely a different time. Like I seen it, you know, when they had the NBA bubble, you know, the bench is, is, is your fans now. Your bench is your support. Your coaches are your support. Um, you got to rely on each other. So they, they got to find a way to, you know, get themselves riled up, get themselves self-motivated and do what they got to do. Exactly, exactly. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, man, so, but, uh, yeah, man, you know, so crazy. I was watching last night after the Indiana game. Uh, they showed y'all a road to, to the national championship. You know, they talked about they showed y'all uh, going to the final four of y'all your junior year, and then they showed y'all senior year and that whole process, you know, that road to the championship. Um, and for me personally, man, you know, I was at the math at the time. I was a junior, senior, watching that that whole run. Like, what was that? What was that process like, man? Because obviously, I, I I didn't have a chance to experience it, man. But just to just to go through that, man, being on that first team to ever get to the Final Four at Maryland, and then to end up going up and winning the championship, being the first, being on the first team, and, and a big reason why Maryland won the national championship. Like, what was that? What was that feeling like, and what was that? What was that whole journey like? If you kind of could explain it to me a little bit, because like I said, I've experienced it, but you know, um, it was very surreal. You know, we being the first Maryland team, you know, all the great teams before us to reach a, a Final Four, um, it was amazing. You know, just to just to be in the Final Four with a team like Duke, um, Arizona. Who was the other team that was there that year? Was it Michigan State? Um, uh huh. I think it was Michigan State. Was it Michigan State or was it Florida? I can't remember. I'm, but anyway, um, just to be the first Maryland team to reach the Final Four, that was a uh, a feat that we really, you know, felt good about. Just to be on that stage, to be on there with those elite teams, to show that we belonged. Um, and we had a devastating first loss in the first game. You know, being up twenty-two. And, you know, things happen, you know. Uh, I don't like to make excuses, but, you know, everybody who saw the game was at the game. It was just <laughs> – it is what it was. We lost being up 22. And that, that really yeah. fueled us for the next season to really come back and, and, and make our championship run. We, we refused. It was championship or bust after that because we were so close and we felt like we shouldn't have lost that game to Duke and Minneapolis. So – that that season before that loss really fueled us to win a national championship. And you know, me being from Silver Spring, Maryland, uh, being a Maryland native, me and Juan Dixon were the two guys that were really, you know, from the state of Maryland. Uh, we just had a lot. To, uh, we had a lot of weight on our shoulders. 
Because, you know, when we go to the barber shops, when we go hang out with our friends and around the way, like, we got to hear everything. And, you know, we had a lot of, we had a, a big chip to prove because, you know, we lost the Duke. And in a way, we should, we should have, we felt like we should have just won that game, but we didn't. So to come back the next year with that determination, I mean, to show how resilient we were, um, I mean, even to this day, it's still a, a surreal cloud nine feeling that, that I'll never forget, you know, just because, like I say, I'm from the state of Maryland, so I, I, I took a tremendous amount of pride in winning the national championship for the University of Yeah, man. <clears throat> like I said, that was that was huge, man. Like I said, I, re I, I, I literally relived that moment last night, man. And I know where I was at, you know, when I watched y'all when y'all won the championship. I was in New York, man. I was actually right beside Bracey Wright, who went to Indiana. So we was watching the championship <laughs> game together and just watching oh, yeah. that whole process, man. We talked trash to each other, man. But, man, I was excited for you guys because, like I said, I, I started to know you guys. I was coming up there a little bit, spending time with you guys, man. But just to you know, sometimes be at practice or to watch pickup and see how hard you guys were working and the, the, the extra work y'all put in, you know, like in the, the type of relationship y'all had, y'all was like, y'all was brothers, man. And I, I seen how y'all lived and, and how y'all held each other accountable and the work y'all put in. So just to relive it again last night, man, it was, it was a beautiful thing, man. And I was just, you know, like I say, when I know when I was going to talk to you today, man, I wanted to get that experience and, and to see, you know, what that feeling was like. Like you say, it's being from Maryland and then being to win a championship at Maryland, being on that first team, man. That's that's something, man, that you can tell your kids about, man. And now your name's in the rafters, man. And, man, it's, it's, it's like I said, like you said, man, it's a surreal feeling, man. So it's, it's, it's great to hear stories like that. And I'm pretty sure a lot of other people love to hear those type of stories as well. Of course. Uh, we were a very tight-knit group, you know, our team. Uh, we're still close to this day. You know, we have a, a group chat that we text on, you know, that we, we keep in touch with. Um, but we were a team that was just, we were all about winning. We were all about the team. It wasn't, you know, no egos or anything. Um, we went out and did what we had to do to win, and that was the most important, you know, just making sure that we got the job done. And that's why we're so close to this day because, like I say, we were tight-knit. Um, we were held everybody responsible, accountable. And that's why we had the success that we had, you know, just being a team that didn't have any McDonald's, all Americans, a bunch of, you know, underrated guys coming in. Nobody really knew about us when we first started at Maryland. Um, just to excel the way we did each year and get better and better into a championship team. I mean, that's, that's what you, that's what you come to college for. Right, exactly. Like, and that was, that was another thing, man. Y'all didn't have no McDonald's All-Americans on y'all team, but then y'all excelled and, and beat teams that had a number of McDonald's All-Americans on their team. But it's just, like you said, it just go to show you, man, that the will. Didn't have any uh, NBA guys that end up going to the league from that team. So, man, that's that's huge, man. And y'all show a lot of players, a lot of teams, man, that, that, that think they need McDonald's All-Americans to win when they really don't, because y'all was a perfect example of that, you know? And then you guys still went on and had great careers after Maryland. <clears throat> uh, most definitely, you know, that's a, um, a big testament, a big shout out to uh, Coach Gary Williams. Uh, Coach Williams never liked to coach the big all-time all-star players. He likes the gritty guys, you know, the under the radar guys, and he knows how to get the best out of his players. Um, and that's just a, you know, a testament to him and, you know, how good of a coach he is. And he got the best out of us year after year and made us better and, and groomed us into a, a championship pedigree team. Right. Exactly, man. And um, I know one other thing I wanted to talk about, man, was I was at that last, y last game at Coldfield House. I never had a chance to play – at Merlin, when I was at Merlin, I never had a chance to play, you know, have a game at uh, Kofi House, you know, in college. But, man, I was at that last game where y'all played against Virginia. And just to see, man, the excitement in there, man, like, that's one thing about Kofi House, the excitement, how the fans were, man. It was, it was hot. It was hot as a mug in there, man. But um, it was – the atmosphere was crazy. Everybody knew it was the last game and played in that historic uh, gym. Um. What was that feeling like, man? Just you, you, you part, like I said, you part of so much history in the sense of being on the last team to play in a historic gym like Coldfield 
and what was that feeling like to be able to close it out the way y'all did? Um, I, I actually, I won a, a city title with Anacostia Coldfield House, and that was one of the reasons why I, I, I wanted to come to Maryland a long time before then. Um, you know, so I have a lot of history there. They're playing there for four years, practicing there every day. You know, all our home games. Um, I remember the, the big Jumbotron, like always looking up at the scoreboard, uh, doing timeouts and everything. That's just a feeling you'll never forget. Um, Coldfield House was just the greatest, great experience. Um, you know, it, sometimes it got a little rowdy in there. You know, our fans was. <laughs> Uh, our home uh -huh, I already know. got out of control, but that was our home. That was our gym, and we defended it, you know, the best we could. And that, that's what it's about, about defending your home court and just the, the sense of pride. Like I say, coming from Maryland, um, carrying that weight on my shoulders, you know, I, I took a lot of pride every time I put that jersey on and saw that big M in the middle of the floor. Like, you know, that was home for me. And like I say, I had history because I had already won a state title, a uh, city title there um, against Gonzaga back in 1997 with Anacostia. So um, I was a little upset when they, they tore Coldfield House down because it meant a lot to me. Um, but I, I still have my memories and my history of it. So, uh, yeah, it was just, just a tremendous feeling. Every night I put that jersey on and stepped out on that Coldfield House floor. Yeah, man, I, I definitely, like I said, man, I was – I was at that game, and I remember everything about it. I remember how electric that gym was, how hot that gym was, we had <laughs> won, how the, how crazy the fans went. So I, I definitely, um, I definitely know what you mean, man. Um, and another thing I wanted to ask you, the, the, I think I want to ask you the championship, man. What was like a hundred thousand fans in there? Um, something like that. It was a lot. I know that. <laughs> it was like. A Um, I can't remember the exact number, but I mean, it was jam packed, you know, people from all over the state of Maryland coming to congratulate us. Um, me, I was just ecstatic at, you know, what we had accomplished because it was, I'm still on cloud nine about it, you know, so many years later. Um, it was just a, just those great feelings you'll never forget. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, man. Like I said, man. Just just watching that that game, man, and 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 seeing all those fans, man, and seeing that crowd. Then winning it there, like after the game, man. I ain't you got to say too much about after the game, man. Like how was the celebration? Like how was like just how was that feeling? Like like once I left the floor, and cause I know y'all got bombarded once I left the arena, man, and <laughs> you know being in Atlanta and. It's all it's over, man. Y'all won the chip. Y'all won the biggest thing, and it's over. Y'all done. Like, like, what was that? Ex like, what was that experience, man? Um, coming into that Indiana game, there was a lot of nerves because, like I said, we had lost before to Duke being up twenty-two. So there was a lot of nerves, a lot of pressure for us not to blow a big lead again. And I just remember when the 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 scoreboard, when the score clock hit zero, and I remember Juan throwing the ball up in the air. And I fell to the ground and just sheer uh -huh. excitement. Taj and Juan standing over me like I mean you've seen that picture a thousand times all over and it's just it's just something that's always going to be ingrained in my mind that that when the clock hits zero zero in in, a, in the um, Georgia Dome that's something that I'll never forget um and then coming back to the celebration uh it was just unbelievable like like back then you couldn't tell me anything so Yeah, like I, like I said, man, I, I was living by curiously through you guys, the whole thing, man. Like I think I said, I was in New York, and I remember um, they say, I guess, when I, when I came back, man, like it was pandemonium on college, on campus, man. And and like I said, I just heard stories about how crazy it was there, man, and that whole experience, man. I And I remember before I got there, man, I said, you know, I wanted to have that experience. I mean, obviously, I didn't have a chance to get that type of experience, but – um, in regards to the winning national championship, man, but just to just to to hear so much about it and to see pictures and 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 the newspaper articles about that that whole situation, man, it was 
it was an incredible thing, man. I know I was super happy for you guys. Yeah, um, like I say, I'm still on cloud nine about it. It's one of my most surreal memories that will always stick with me. You know, um, you know, I work in a car dealership. Sometimes people come in and be like, thank you for the championship. You know, people that I've never met. And to this day, it's just something that will always, you know, resonate with me. You know, just, just, it's just the most surreal feeling. Like I say, being from Maryland, having Maryland pride and, and winning the national championship in your hometown is nothing like it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge, man. Um, besides winning the national championship, which I know is probably your number one thing, but what was your most, your, your one of your greatest moments at Maryland besides, like I said, besides winning the national championship? Um, besides winning the national championship, um, I mean, to be honest, just my first day at Maryland, my, my rookie year, just taking it all in. Um, I knew before, you know, a long time ago that I wanted to go to Maryland and, you know, the whole process was just surreal. Just from day one, just getting in my dorm room, um, <laughs> going to class, getting my books, just walking around campus. Um, that whole, the whole process was just, is just one of the, I mean, that started the whole process on the road to the championship, but it's just, you know, cause it's like, it's like things were meant to be, you know, it, it's kind of hard to explain. And like, I ended up going to Maryland. That was my number one choice school and things worked out and the rest is history. So um, that is definitely, you know, you know, like I say, just the whole process of just getting ingrained into Maryland, becoming a part of the team, part of the system, you know, just be, being a student at Maryland, the whole experience is definitely one of the best things I ever did. No, I, I definitely, I definitely know that feeling, man. You know, it's, 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 it's nothing like Merlin. And I, and I, like I said, man, I came in right after y'all won the national championship. So, you know, my first time on campus, my first time in college, period. And just, I'm basically, we be, honestly, we basically were still riding on the back of you guys winning the national championship because it was the next, the, the very next year after that. So, everybody still was on cloud nine. You know, Steve, Taj. Ryan and Drew was still there, and Calvin McCall, those guys were still there. So they was part of the national championship. So a lot of that flavor was still there. So, and I know a lot of you guys probably heard it, like we still was, you know, living off you guys' national championship. So, <clears throat> you know, just that whole experience, man, and just how campus was, man. Like you said, man, it was, <laughs> it was, it was crazy. It was, it was a, especially as a freshman coming in, just experiencing all that, man, and the high people still was on. Um, it was an amazing feeling, man. So I definitely uh, know what you mean. Yeah, most definitely. I'm so after you, after you, after you left. Yeah. So after you, after you left Merlin, after you left Merlin, like so, obviously you got drafted, man. How was that experience, that whole process like, man? Um, being drafted to the Chicago Bulls. Um, it's definitely another surreal feeling. Um, just watching Chicago play all my, my my younger years as an adolescent, you know, the, that was the house that Mike built. And, you know, just coming into the practice center, seeing all the trophies, all the names, you know, of course, Mike going to stand out to you, you know. And I always tell the story, right. the first day of training camp is when I actually first met Michael Jordan. And, um, Wow. He happened to be at the facility for some reason. I don't know why he was there, you know. Um, yeah. I walk into the training room to get my ankles taped, whatever, and Michael Jordan is standing there. Uh, he had on a blue Carolina suit, some Jordan 1s, and I look at him, and I'm in awe because this is this is Mike. Like, this is my childhood. I, the greatest thing right. I've ever and I'm like, like, I wanted to be like a little bitch and like ask for autographs and pictures, but I tried to keep my cool. Like, hey, what's going on, Mike? And, all right, all right, all right. Hey, what's going on, LB? I see you banging, doing your thing. And I'm like, like, I was just excited that Michael Jordan knew my name. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? But I mean, I'm still trying to mean the church. Like, um, <laughs> excuse my language. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking, you know. Um, and like I say, it's, it's Mike, and that was the first time I ever got to meet him. And it, 
was, you know, like I say, I was just happy to be in the house that Mike built, you know, that history, being with such a team that has a rich tradition. Um, it was another dream come true for me. Nah, that's what's up, man. Um, yeah, man, it's just that's that's crazy. Yeah, I man, I could just imagine that feeling like you said, man. Me on Mike, man, you woke up in the day, you know your name, you like, you know what I mean? So Man, that that that's crazy. Then um, I know you played with the the Wizards, man. How was how was that? How was that, man? You 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 won a national championship at Maryland. You from you from Maryland? Won a national championship at Maryland. Then you go be able to come back home and play in front of your family and your friends, man. Like, how was that, man? Um, it it, it was a blessing and a curse. Um, sometimes you know um. Staying home can be a bad thing, and <laughs> but the play for the Wizards was definitely great because I had, you know, I had Juan Dixon and Steve Blake on the team with me at the same time, so that that made it a lot more comfortable. But um, you know, being home sometimes I had a lot of distractions, a lot of things I wish I didn't do, um, a lot of environments that I that I wish I hadn't have been in. But you know, you live and you learn. You know, that's part of you know growing and you know becoming a man and learning from your mistakes. But yeah, it was definitely a great feeling to play for the, the home team, the Washington Wizards, and having Juan and Steve with me. You know, two guys I was real familiar with, and when we were on the court together, it made it that much easier. Right, yeah, I remember coming to some of y'all games, man, and they called that Merlin, right? They called it the turf right there, man, because all y'all was back on the same team together, man. And then, like you said, you guys want to chip together, so you was familiar with those guys, so I knew it was it was it made things a lot easier, you know what I mean? So, man, I could, I could just, man, just, like I said, I, like I said, I came to some of the games and I experienced some of that, man. I saw that, man. I know I was super happy for you, man. Oh, most deaf. So, yeah. Yeah. So I know. Then I know you went overseas for a little bit too. Um, what was what was what was that process like, or what was uh, that journey like? And you know, what countries did you did you uh, end up going to? Um, I've been uh, my first country I played in was Greece. Uh, my first overseas experience, I played with Panathinaikos. And it was it was an easy transition for me because Greece is real easy to live in. Um, a lot of people speak English there. You know, uh, a lot of the street signs are in Greek and English. A lot of the movie theaters have movies that are that have English. They speak English with Greek subtitles. So it was just an easy transition for me. And Greece has always been one of my favorite places to visit. A uh, very pretty city, very nice surroundings, very friendly people. And it's just it's kind of like one of my second homes. So. Nah, definitely, man. I uh, I played in Greece for a little bit too. I was in uh, I played in Athens and I played in Kavala. Okay, so yeah. you definitely know, you yeah. know, the atmosphere there is real chill, real laid back, and it's just a very welcoming place. So, um, if you ever played in Greece, nothing like it. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, James played with Pontinacus too, so did Drew. You know, so I definitely know the history with them, man. And man, they they. Is either Pacanicos or Olympiacos, and if you ain't on one of those two teams, yeah. then you don't matter. <laughs> yeah, the Nikos and Olympiacos is a real, real, real. They're the two top teams, and those, those games get real heated. <laughs> right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Heated, man. It's it's crazy, man. But uh, like you said, man, just just playing overseas, man, and and getting that different culture. Like you, like you said, you played in the NBA, had a chance to go overseas as well. And it's just, I tell a lot of the players now, man, you know, for me, it was, man, we learned different cultures. We learned about a lot of different things that we probably would never known if it wasn't for basketball. So just that whole process, man, and 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 and, and experiencing it. And now, like I said, through basketball, man, we have so many life lessons, you know, stuff and bad stuff that we now can use to help the, the younger generation and the other players that's coming behind us that may know our history or remember us. Or, you know, when you go back on the campus and guys know who you are because your name's in the rafters or your name's on the walls and they know the history, they watch the championship game. So you guys can kind of like help and, and mentor or teach the younger guys and younger players that's coming behind us. Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, everybody has their own different life experiences. Um, you know, when I try to, you know, talk to players, I tell them, you know, make, make basketball your lifestyle. Um, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes. Uh, you know, I had a lot of distractions, a lot of baggage, you know, that I carried with me for a long time that I didn't even realize was baggage. So, um, but when you, when you 
playing professional sports, professional anything, you like put yourself first, you know, before your family, before you, because your career only lasts for so long. And, you know, that opportunity is, you know, not, not many people get this opportunity. So, um, you know, just take it serious, you know, enjoy it. But most importantly, put yourself first and, you know, make it your lifestyle. Work hard at it, dedicate yourself to it, and everything else will fall into place. Man, that's what's up, man. Um, man, for real, man, I, I really appreciate you taking your time out your busy day. Uh, to, to, to talk with me, man. Um, like I said, this is my first podcast, so, you know, I'm super uh, excited about it, you know, just be able to have these conversations with you guys that I've seen on campus that I know personally or that I've just seen on the TV, man, and to just ex exp go watch our process and watch our win games and championships, man. So, like I said, I appreciate you for taking time out your day to be on the Go Turpins with Travis Garrison on the Field of 16 Networks. <laughs> You know, if you need you. anything from me, I'm here. So whenever you need to reach out, I'm here for you, homie. So my man. Hey, 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 I'm going to remember that, too, because I'm definitely going to hit you back up. Come back on. <laughs> yeah, you got my number, so you can hit me anytime. So. Now, I appreciate that, man. And, again, tell people where you at before they can uh, come through, man, and, and get some of them cars. I may got to come holler at you, too, of myself. Course, yeah. I'm at, I'm at Coons of Silver Spring and Briggs Cheney, 3111 Automobile Boulevard, Silver Spring. If you need any car deals, looking for a new used car, Mazda, Ford, Lincoln, I'm your guy. So just holler at me. Yeah, I hear that. Make sure you go check out my guy, Lonnie Baxter. You know, go and pick up a car a vehicle for yourself or your loved ones. Um, again, Lonnie, man, I appreciate you, brother. Man, anytime. Thanks for having me.